In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a basic theme using Visual Style Builder, and then I'm going to show you how to apply that theme inside of your RAD Controls based application. So here I have opened a copy of Visual Style Builder, and the control we're going to be working with today is the RAD button. So I'm going to expand this in the control structure and select the RAD button element because that's the element we're going to be styling. And here inside of the, the uh, elements view, we can see all of the different primitives that make up this particular element. And the primitive that we're going to start out styling will be this button fill primitive. So I'll make sure that's selected. And then down here in the bottom right in the repository view, when I click create new repository item, that's going to display a dialog that lets me create a repository item that's associated with that button fill primitive. And the repository item is basically responsible for containing the styles and property settings specific to a particular primitive type. And then once I have this repository item created, I can reuse and reapply it throughout all of the different controls in the control structure. So let's create our repository. I'm going to create it as an office glass rect. And let's go ahead and use one of these default provided colors. We'll, we'll just use orange. And for the repository item key, this is going to be our default state. So I'll go ahead and call this uh, button default. And go ahead and change the name to button default as well. And click OK. And let's create another repository item for the mouse over state of our button. So we'll use an office class rect again. And this time I'll go with, uh, we'll go with, with blue. And let's call this button hover. And we'll also select, set the display name to button hover and click OK. And then finally, let's create one more state for when the mouse button is down on the button. So I'll click create new repository item once again. And let's set this to, uh, let's go with yellow. So I set that and let's change the repository item key to button down and the display name will be button down as well. So I'll click OK. And now to apply these theme repositories, it's as simple as clicking them and dragging them over to the state that we want to associate them with. And for button default, we're going to apply it to the rad button element state, which is the default over overall state of our button. And so now for button hover, let's drag that over the mouse over state. And then for button down, let's drag that over the mouse down state. So now that I've applied those, here inside of the preview window, when I mouse over the button, you can see that it turns blue. And when I click on the button, it turns yellow. Let's go ahead and create uh, one more type of primitive. I'm going to create a border for a button. See, right now it's just a default white border. Let's, let's change it to a different color. So I'm going to select button border. And as you can see, it's removed all of the fill primitives because those are not associated with the border primitive. Uh, if I want to have access to those, I need to make sure to select my fill primitive type once again, and then I can drag and drop those to my element states. So let's switch back to button border now, and I'll click create new repository item. And as you can see, a different dialog popped up this time. And this dialog is uh, specific to creating border repositories. So for this border, uh, I'll go ahead and change the four color of it. And let's just go with a uh, bright red color. So I'll click OK. And I'm going to call this uh, just button border. And the display name will be button border as well. Click OK. And now to apply this, I simply need to once again click it and drag it to the element state I want to apply it to. And I'm just going to make this the default state. So when I drag it over that, it's going to stay red uh, for no matter what state the button is because the default state has been changed, but I've uh, not bothered to change the mouse over or the mouse down state. And something else uh, neat that I want to show you is let's switch over to the RAD calendar. And I'm going to go ahead and expand down in here. And let's take a look at the uh, month view element and the calendar cell element. So if I switch over to design view, we can see that uh, this particular element is highlighted. So when I switch between these, I can see the particular element that I'm going to be editing. And I'm going to be editing the calendar cell element. So that means when I apply a repository to this, it's going to apply it to all of these cell elements inside of our calendar. So I'll go, go ahead and switch back to preview. And as you can see, uh, to the right, I have access to all of the repository items that I had previously created for a button. Uh, but this time here in our calendar, since we can use uh, fill repositories and border repositories for this particular element that is selected. So I'm going to apply the 
button default repository to this. And to do that, I simply once again need to just click it and drag it. And I'm going to set it on the default state. And as you can see, all of the cell elements inside of our calendar have changed to that new color. And if I switch back to the rad button element, we can see that our button is that same color because it's using that same exact repository. Uh, but something cool with this that I want to show you is if we switch back over to button fill for our button, I'm going to edit that repository that we've applied to the calendar and to this button. So I'll go ahead and double click that. And let's change the color of this to, uh, let's, let's change it to green. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And so as you can see, our button is now green. And if we switch back over to our calendar, it's green as well because they're both using that same exact repository. And because these things are using the same repository, when we uh, finally save this file out into XML, it's going to be smaller in file size compared to previous releases uh, of Visual Style Builder, where you had to set uh, individual properties specific to each controls, uh, whereas now you can save those properties by using repositories and reuse them throughout different controls. So now that we've created our basic themes, I'm going to go ahead and save this out. So from the menu, I'll select File, Save, and I'm going to go ahead and select a folder for this. So I'll select C, uh, let's put it in the Source folder, and I'll just make a new folder called Themes, where I'll save this and click OK. And let's call this Basic Theme. And as you can see in this window, I can see all of the different repositories I've created. I have the option to uncheck or check whether or not whether or not I would like to save them in my file. And I also have the ability to select which themes that I want to save out. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything checked because I want to save everything and I'll click OK now. And that's going to save out our theme into those XML files and it's also going to create a repository XML file for us. So let's load our themes up into our RAD Controls based application. So I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio now. And here's an application that I've previously created. It's just a basic application. It contains some buttons and a RAD calendar. And so to include our new theme in this application, from the toolbox, I'm going to scroll down to where I have the RAD controls, and I'm going to drag out a RAD theme manager. Now that I have that, I'll just go ahead and click its smart tag and select load theme from file. And then I'm going to browse to that theme that I just output. And I need to make sure to select all of the files that I output, uh, including the repository file. So I'll go ahead and click Open. And now those are included in the RAD Theme Manager. And to apply these themes to my control, all I need to do now is I can actually individually select these controls and scroll down to their theme property and change the theme name. And as you can see, that basic theme is now showing up in there. And when I select it, it changes that button to use that theme that it's pulling out of those XML files. Uh, but what if I want to apply that theme to my overall application? Well, that's quite simple as well. So I'm going to switch it back to the default. And let's jump into the code behind. Inside of here, I can actually type a theme resolution service. And go ahead and resolve this type. And then on this, uh, we'll just set the application theme name to be basic theme. And now when we run the application, it's going to apply that theme that we created throughout our entire application. And therefore, it will be applied to all of our controls. So that's pretty much the basics of working with themes, creating them, and using them inside of your applications. Thanks for watching.